Hi, my name is Pierre with the Analyzer team. In this series of videos, we're going to explore how to build a propensity model. To do that, we're going to focus today on getting ready. We'll cover three topics in today's session. First, how to create a data set. Second, how to create a model. And third, exploring your data set. Before we start, you may want to have some machine learning software with you to follow along our steps. If you like Python coding, Jupyter Notebooks are the way to go. Otherwise, feel free to use something like DataRobot, H2O.ai, or Analyzer, our own machine learning solution, which we recommend. All right, let's dig in. Our first step is going to be create a data set. This assumes you've already collected your data from the different sources that are relevant to you, and you've assembled it into one large table into a tabular data set. In our case, we have a CSV file. I'm going to select source type CSV. We've downloaded uh, a marketing campaign data set from Kaggle, and I encourage you to do the same. And that's the data set we're going to start from. That's it. Our data set is created and connected. We now need to create a model object. If you're using Python, you will need to load the appropriate library, say scikit-learn or some other library, and write a few lines of code to create your model object. Here, we're simply going to create a model. My model, we're going to select propensity type. I select my data set. That's it. We've created a model object, which is now ready to be configured. We are now ready to explore a data set. It's always important to first check that the data is what you think it is. This is the data we just uh, uploaded, marketing campaign. You can see that the fields are the ones we expected, and the data seems to have come through correctly. Always good to check. Check also how many rows you have. Sample size is important. 2,000 rows is very small for a data set, but should be sufficient for this demo. You may have anywhere from a few thousand rows to millions of rows. Just make sure it is what you think it is. Think also about how many variables you have uh, and make sure that you have at least 50 to 100 times the number of variables as your number of rows so that there's enough data uh, to conduct your analysis. Then explore the variables a little bit. Make sure that it is what you think it is. Look at things like fill rate. Is my data set sparse with a lot of missing values? or uh, is everything well populated? If it's sparse, we can still deal with it, and we'll talk about that later on. But understanding that is really important up front. In our case, we'll also take a look at the variable of interest, the outcome of interest, which is the response to a marketing campaign. Did, people, um, did a lot of people respond or not? In our case, we have a response rate of about 14%. Uh, that means most people will not. Uh, so we'll have to think about this uh, in terms of something called smooth preprocessing during configuration of the model itself, but that's just something to note at this point. And as always, check everything else, make sure that your data looks correct, and build your own understanding, compare it to your domain expertise uh, for the problem you're modeling, and make sure that the data looks right to you. Once you've done this, you're now ready to move on and configure the model itself. We just covered the first three steps of how to build your own propensity model. We covered how to create a data set, how to create a model, and how to explore your data set. In the next session, we'll focus on selecting variables, selecting an algorithm, and running the model itself. If you'd like to learn more, feel free to check our blog at analyzer.ai blog.